Hey guys, Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA, and in this video, we're gonna be going over the sales of an ESPP and RSU and how those are reported on a tax return. More specifically, these were held in a Charles Schwab brokerage account. So if that is something where your stock options are held, this is gonna be super helpful for you. The ESPPs were sold in both a qualifying and disqualifying disposition. So we'll go over both of those scenarios, plus again, the RSUs. I do have a separate video of sales of both ESPP and RSUs where the stocks were held in an E-Trade account. So if that's something you wanna see a specific example for, be sure to check that out. All right, so I think the most important thing when reporting the sales of these stock options is to have all the proper documentation here before you start the tax return. It's almost a given. Every time I do these returns, I don't get everything I need up front. I always have to ask for more information. So let's make sure that you don't fall trapped to this, okay? So this is what we'll need. Of course, number one, we're gonna need the W-2. Number two is the 1099B from the brokerage account, right? Charles Schwab in this case. And in this case, there are two. And generally speaking, I do see two. Sometimes there is just one, but uh, there might be two out there, okay? So make sure you get both of those. And then in this case, we're gonna get the what Charles Schwab calls the activity statement. Uh, in the other example that I do, my other video, it from E-Traded, it's called the Stock Plan Transaction Supplement. Uh, those are very important that we get that. And then also, it was super important in this one to kind of reconcile numbers to get that purchase disposition summary from Charles Schwab. Okay, so we need to start off by analyzing the W-2 itself to see what was reported as taxable in the W-2, right? This box one, which goes on the tax return as taxable income. So we take a look at the earnings and the deductions and see again, how did we get this payroll? And you'll see here, and in this example, right, there is, right, stock option gain there. There should also be, right, that RSU as well, okay? But you'll also see on the other side, which kind of is confusing, right, there are these offsets, Right, you'll see an offset here. Um, there's an offset here, non-qualified stock offset. Right, um, those kind of get confusing. So what we need to do again is to see how did we calculate this. All right, so if we look at my handy spreadsheet here, I did the calculation here to see what was included as box one W two taxable income. Um, you'll see all the things in the blue are essentially non-taxable. And anything that, uh, let's see here, well, as in, in additions, these black would be taxable. And in the black here on the deduction side, uh, essentially are taxable as well. So these are not um, removed from taxable income. So what we did here is, right, we added all, all up the additions on this side. And then, you know, we just got this amount from the W-2. And then what is that difference here, right? That's 79. And then we had to calculate, how did we get the 79? And you'll see here, right? We had to add up all these, essentially the health stuff, the 401k, that HSA. There's a company match for that 401k, non-taxable. And then also this HSA offset here was non-taxable. And that mobile allowance, which you're going to notice here is taxable, right? Are the stock option gain, that RSU, right? And they did not remove out of taxable income those offsets, okay? So those are all already included. So now we need to check with what was reported on the 1099 so we can make sure that, hey, if these are not included in the basis, we need to do that so we don't get double tax on the sale of these ESPPs and RSUs. All right, so I'm going to start off with this first 1099 here from Charles Schwab and see exactly what is this. Number one, we do know that these are long-term transactions. So essentially, these are generally the qualified. But if I take a look at the purchase disposition summary, we're going to find out that, hey, I do see those right here. Those are all qualifying dispositions. So we now know, right, you'll, you can kind of compare these, these, these shares here. If we take a look here, right, where I have it all on one page, let's get my face out of the way, that, hey, you'll see all these shares line up here with all these shares. So these are all the same. These are the qualifying dispositions of the ESPPs. You're going to find out, right, that, that that disposition summary also does give this ordinary income that was already reported on the W-2. 
Now we need to see if, hey, does that also, is that already included in the basis, right? The basis, which is over here of the 1099. All right, so the way to find out if this ordinary income is already included in this total basis is we gotta do some math to kinda, kinda check this out, okay? We'll, we, we'll add up all this ordinary income. We're gonna see, right, shares dispositions by what these proceeds are and how they got this capital gain and compare that to what this capital gain is from the 1099. All right, so I got my handy spreadsheet here. I essentially just copied all the numbers from the 1099 as well as the purchase disposition summary and kind of see what came out, right? I totaled up all the ordinary income. I did that capital gain loss, totaled that up on there, okay? And then I did the same thing with the, the 1099 here. What was the capital gain here? And then I see what's the difference between this 19,000 and the 14,000, right? And we'll see that number pop up, that 4,300. So we now know that the ordinary income, right, that 4,305, which was previously, you'll notice here, reported as income, included already as taxable income on the W-2. That same $4,300 keeps popping up. So what do we need to do for this? We need to make the basis adjustment on the tax return. We add this to the basis so we don't get double tax on the tax return. So instead of reporting that 19,000, that would have been reported if we just use the 1099, right? We're gonna pay tax on 14,000, not the 19,000. All right, so the next thing we gotta do is take a look at the other 1099 that we got, which reports the non-qualified sales of the ESPPs and those RSUs and see, hey, is the amounts that were reported on the W-2 previously already taxed included in the basis of these stock sales? So you'll see here first and foremost, right, that there are two separate sections in the 1099 where these are reported. And we're going to find out that the non-qualifieds are where the basis is reported to the IRS and the RSUs have the basis is not reported to the IRS. So to be able to check that, we're going to take a look at this activity statement that is given by Charles Schwab and see kind of what was reported here. And you'll see down at the bottom, it says transaction and tax summary, right? It'll have these non-qualified dispositions and it'll have those RSUs. All right. So you'll notice here that it does give us like the cost of these stock options, right? And the proceeds, how much we sold it for, and then what was reported on the W-2. You're going to be able to compare this with what was actually on the 1099, right? So we'll see this 10 shares, the cost of 452 and those proceeds, 928. You're going to see that on the 1099 right here, 10 shares. There's the proceeds. There is the cost basis. And this is what they're reporting the IRS as capital gain. So we know they did not include this taxable compensation in that basis. So we need to make that adjustment here. Now, here's what I did for simplicity. I took the total amount. I took out all these RSUs, okay, to see what that taxable compensation or that adjustment is specifically just for these ESPPs, the non-qualified. And you're going to see that amount here right? This is from that activity statement. You'll see the total amount of compensation that was reported here. How much was for attributable to those RSUs? And there's our adjustment that we need to make. I should have coded this as purple here on the tax return itself. Okay. That 128,770. Now this is going to be a reoccurring theme. You'll see this 128 number pop up right here, right? Already reported as taxable income in the W-2. Now, if we do the same thing with the RSUs here, right? We go through, we see what's the cost, zero, okay. Taxable compensation, we add these three up, one, two, and three, here it is, right? We go to our spreadsheet, what is that number? There it is, the $57,000, right? So we need to add that to the, to the basis, right? Because basis is not here, there is zero. Well, no, let's take a look at the 1099 itself. We go to the 1099 and you'll see these are the RSUs here. And you'll see that number, that $57,000 number that's popping up here. Where also you're going to see that $50,000 number pop up is, of course, on the W-2. There it is, already 
taxed in your W-2 box one. So we wanna make sure again, we don't get double taxed here. But since it's already reported on this 1099 here, there's no adjustment that we actually need to make, okay? We just need to report what is on this 1099. So we get tax on the difference here, right? The, the 58, which is the proceeds, and then the basis, which was already in taxable income. Generally, this is how it works for RSUs. There's no adjustment that's needed because these are generally reported properly on these 1099s. All right, so action items that we need to do here on the tax return. We need to add to the basis for the qualified ESPPs, that 4,300. We also need to do the same thing for the non-qualified, but the RSU, we're just gonna report exactly what's on that 1099. All right, so here's how we report those sales on TurboTax. So we go here to wages and income. We're gonna scroll down to the investment and savings, add and edit. We scroll down and we're gonna go here to add investments. Click on continue. We're not gonna log in here. I'm sure you could on your end, but I can. I'm gonna hit enter a different way. 1099 stocks and bonds, continue and enter in the brokerage account, Charles Schwab here. Do these sales include employee stock? Yes, they do, we know that. Do you have more than three sales? Yes, we have over three, four. All right, so you can either enter these in one by one. I generally just don't do this. I enter the totals here. It makes it a lot easier. And I'll show you how to get this done. Hit continue. And here we go. All right, so the sales section, how do we do this? We take a look at the 1099 itself. If we look at this one here, right, we're gonna say these are long-term transactions for which basis is reported to the IRS. Okay, so we're gonna go here. Let's go to long-term basis is reported deal. And then we're just gonna do the total proceeds. So if I look at this 1099 itself, right, we're gonna go down here to the total, right? That 43, we know if we go up here, this is the proceeds. So 43 is the proceeds. We're gonna enter that in as well as the basis, which is the next line, right? That 24,000, okay? All right, super important here. We need to make an adjustment, right? If we go back to my action items, these qualified ESPPs, we need to add to basis. So we're gonna check this button here. I need to make an adjustment to my cost basis. I'm gonna say because the cost basis was incorrect on the tax form. And then I'm just gonna enter in the adjustment right here as a negative number. And that's it, I click continue. And voila, there it is. There's that $14,000 number that I can double check from my spreadsheet here, right? That 14,000, there it is. That needs to get reported on the Schedule D. And then we gotta do this again. All right, and for the sales section here, we're gonna take a look at the 1099 itself and we're gonna see, right, short-term transactions for which basis is reported to the IRS. So we're gonna click that button here. Now we need the total section here, right? Total proceeds. So, and in, his, in this case here specifically, there are a whole bunch of other stock transactions. It's not just the ESPP. So I'm actually gonna have to scroll down and you'll see, right, these are subtotals for his uh, ESPPs, but those are not the totals for that section of the short term, right, which basis is reported. So I would have to go ahead and enter these numbers here. All right, so super important that we check this box that you need to make an adjustment to the cost basis because we know that these non-qualified ESPPs don't have everything that was already previously reported on the W-2. So we check this box and we're gonna hit this code B here and to make that adjustment. That 128 again that we see from the W-2 right here, right? And again from our spreadsheet where I made sure that we are reporting this properly. Whoops, that would be, shoot, right there, that 128 figure, okay? Now that's not the only adjustment we're making in this case, because if you see from the 1099, there are wash sale loss that are disallowed, this 3,300. So we need to actually make an adjustment for that as well. And what the wash loss itself does is it actually, it minuses, reduces out of your basis. So it increases your capital gain. So that's what we're gonna do, right? We need to add that 128 to the basis, but then we're gonna remove out that wash loss and there's our total adjustment, that 125. So that's actually what needs to get entered into TurboTax. And we are also, again, gonna check that box, the W for the non-deductible non loss of wash, wash loss, wash sales, sorry. So it's that 125,000 figure and we hit continue 
And there it is. It's going to be reported right there, that 125. And last but not least, we'll add another sales total, which is for these RSUs, right? Sales section, which one is this? We'll take a look at the 1099 again. Here's those RSUs. Short-term transaction for is is available but not reported to the IRS. So that's what we'll do here. We're going to say that it's not available, not reported. There it is, non-covered, okay? And then enter in these totals that we have that are on the 1099. And this and in this specific case, these are just specifically these RSUs on this 1099. So I'm going to enter the 58 as proceeds and 57 as basis. And again, these RSUs already have the basis in the 1099. Again, we can see, right, that number from the W-2 here, that 57, right? You'll see it's reported. There it is, right, from the 1099. So no need to adjust the basis on this one. We're just going to click continue. All right, and there it is. We're going to click continue again. And then we're going to upload the PDFs here. Maybe I did this a little improper. It should have been done as two separate ones because there are two different 1099s, but uh, nonetheless, you would have to do it exactly like that. So I'm just going to upload the one PDF here. All right, click continue and voila, we're done. All right, last but not least, and I think most importantly, you need to double check that this got reported properly on the 8949 of the actual tax return itself. So if we take a look here, right, we'll see, right, those short-term transactions basis is reported to the IRS there, okay? And then you'll see here, right, that Charles Schwab account, right? That should look familiar. There's that 125. There's the code B, which is incorrect basis. There's the M for multiple transactions. And then there's the W for the wash, loss, disallowed sale, okay? So there's that 125. And we keep going here, right? We'll see the, oh, this is long-term basis is reported. So this would be the qualified sales of the ESPPs, right? And you'll see our adjustment right there done properly. Again, B is for incorrect basis. M is multiple transactions. And if we keep going here, right, we'll see the short-term basis wasn't reported to the IRS. These are the RSUs here. And you'll see again, right, we made no adjustment there. There are just the multiple trans, uh, transactions essentially, okay? There we go. Finally, we're done with this, okay? Hopefully this hel video was helpful for you. Again, if you have an E-Trade account, be sure to check out my other video that kind of shows how I did that process because it is a little different with the additional supplemental information that they give you there and kind of how that looks. I highly recommend that you actually go through all of the documents here to make sure, again, these are getting done properly. If not, be sure to check out you know a tax professional to help you out with this. If you know anyone this video would help out, please share this video with them. Thank you so much, guys.